Oh man, hold on. All right, so like you quit technical difficulty. First and foremost, we give all praise, honor, and glory to the Most High God, Yahweh. In the name is only begotten Son, Yahweh Shai. We're back at y'all with another Friday night class. Um, starting a little late tonight. We just came from a event, um, event in the city uh, downtown, uh, dealing with the um, some sisters was having an event. Um, you know, and uh, it was like a, um, you know, sister was sharing, you know, various things like a. Uh, you know, poetry uh, predominantly. And, um, you know, it was, it was an event by uh, the black woman for the black woman. So, um, you know, it was, it was good. Um, and, you know, we, we unfortunately couldn't stay for the whole thing to get to get to class. But in seeing what we saw um, and hearing, you know, uh, the sisters speak from their heart and whatnot, um, er everything just becomes overwhelming. Say, all right, we back. Okay, you know, <clears throat> yeah, so, um, <laughs> so, uh, everything just becomes so evident, you know, uh, how how in dire need of the Bible we are as a people, um, and how all other so called avenues of empowerment or healing solutions, yes, I'm. No, I would have been. Ay, Dios mío. Um, tell him. Um, Jamaica's good. How Jamaica? How Jamaica? Only limon? Oh, Jamaica. Oh, Jamaica is good. It's like only no, yeah, Jamaica. I, I mess with Jamaica. Yeah, the hibiscus. Yeah, Jamaica. Jamaica. Yeah, So, um, so like you put it order. So, um, so yeah, uh, came evident that we need this this bike clearly okay sisters is talking about all the various trials and tribulations that have faced them in their life in america and the overwhelming theme was over sexualization each sister we got to see one two three four no and it was about five it was five about five sisters we had to see yeah, about five yeah about five sisters we have to see um, cause the first sister we know, and then the sister with the blonde dress, um, with the white dress, the green one, shirt. yeah, the green and shirt and then, the, and then the, the red head, right? Boom. So, uh, that's mine. So, um, and seeing that all five of them were speaking about over being over sexualized, sexually taken advantage of, and you know, things of that nature, um, which is unfortunate, but it's it's what has happened to our people all right um and the last sister being the most powerful in my opinion not to take anything away from anybody else but she she made the most powerful statements because how she was over sexualized and how she was you know having sex with men and uh you know um she didn't really like it but pretended like she liked it but at the same time she she gave air for brothers in that same it's just said this brother's probably doing the same thing you see what i'm saying just taking out his frustrations of the world and the pressures of the world um through this sexual act so 
this um you know it was it was it was profound in that instance but what we have to understand is the only way to truly correct that and to truly heal from that is through the scriptures okay because the scriptures told us we was going to be in this position and the scriptures told us why we landed in this position and it also told us how to get out of this position all right so that's a very a powerful thing to understand and it's crazy that we go to this and and they say you know the sisters say what they say and then somebody had just uh posted a status i believe it was a brother who just posted a status and you know and, and was just talking about the sexualization of our people and i said well I, this is what happened on implantation you were turned into simply an object of absolute and utter lust on implantation you see what i'm saying when the white man colonized the northern kingdom colonized the, the reservations you were just the object of lust for the white man you see what i'm saying that's all or the white woman you see, because the white women, they wanted you, and the white men wanted uh, wanted brothers as well, because we you know they're sick as hell and children and all that. But we've just been over-sexualized in this place by the devil that the Bible speaks of, the so-called white man. So the more we understand that, the better. We have to recognize that first and foremost, God. that the so-called white man is responsible for the over-sexualization of our people. But then what we do, so we don't further it is, you know, be, because we're victims in totality in, in this instance but we have to <clears throat> cease from the furtherance of such all right um so let's go to deuteronomy 28 and um and let's just go to 15. <clears throat> because there especially once the second sister that went up um she was talking about how she was cursed all right and what she went through uh she was basically felt like she was cursed so read that <clears throat> Chapter 28, verse 15. But it shall come to pass, if thou wilt not hearken unto the voice of the Most High, thy power, Read on. to observe to do all his commandments uh -huh. and his statutes, Read on. which I command thee this day, uh -huh. that all these curses shall come upon thee and overtake thee. This is why so many of our people feel cursed. It's not mumbo jumbo. It's not rocket science. We are cursed. <clears throat> you feel cursed, black and Hispanic man, woman, and child because you are cursed okay the question is though what they never tell we can all recognize how we're cursed but the question is of course why are we cursed and that's at the top read it again this is deuteronomy 28 15 but it shall come to pass that thou will not hearken unto the voice of the most high thy power if you don't listen to god read on to observe to do all his commandments uh -huh. and his statutes. read on day uh -huh. that all these curses shall come upon thee a curse comes upon you because you do not listen huh? and overtake thee. Uh -huh. and overtake <clears throat> thee. so this is the position we're in now overtaken trampled upon by the curses that came upon us for our disobedience to our god the most high israel yahweh all right that's what's happened so it takes recognizing acknowledging and understanding that fact to move forward from that fact to stop being the victims of this fact all right and this is why the concept of sex being marriage is so important to understand to every black hispanic and native indian man woman and child let's go to exodus 22 and 16. this is so i had an argument with a guy i'm not gonna name this cam um and uh <clears throat> You know, um, he was basically saying sex was a marriage, right? Slocky, I almost need to. Slocky. So he was essentially saying, not even essentially, he was saying it, that sex isn't marriage. Let me ask y'all something. If sex isn't marriage, then what is? If you could think of what somebody would tell you to say sex is a marriage, what do you believe that they would say? that marriage was just pleasure just pleasure not sex marriage how how do you if, if sex doesn't define marriage then what would define marriage hyper maybe what would you say certificate this is what this is what the argument was 
a brother criticized a certain camp because you have certain camps that push to go before the white man's court and to get a marriage certificate. Tell women that, oh, this man, he's not really with you if he don't want to go and get the certificate. A brother was criticizing him based off the fact he said, well, they working for the white man because the white man get paid every time you do that, right? Uh, Tazma, how much it costs around here to get married? 100 bucks. 100 bucks to get married. It's $100 you got to come out of. For your union that the Most High God made to be validated, Captain. Hundred bucks. That's if you want to just do the shortcut route. Hundred bucks. So uh, then, what? Fifty for the certificate, mm -hmm. and then fifty for a little ceremony. You know, you got your witness, and then you got your uh, pseudo pastor. Hey, eloping the quick elope. The quick elope. Hundred bucks. <clears throat> so we know it costs more if you can go and plan some big event wedding. Of course. Plus fifty dollars for the certificate. That's of Amanda. Of course. Okay. Yeah. Come, come, come. So we understand that. So he's saying. That's why the brother criticized him. So there's a brother on there saying, no, sex is not marriage, right? He goes to this scripture, which is the last scripture you should ever go to to try to say sex isn't marriage, all right? Give me Deuteronomy 22 and 16. Y'all bring that over to me and I'm Mike about to Exodus 22 and 16. This is the book of Exodus, chapter 22, verse 16. Uh -huh. And if a man entice a maid, that is Wait, not if you entice a maid, what does that mean to entice a maid? To, uh, to flirt with her, right? Chop at her, spit game to her, right? Jab at her, whatever, yeah. whatever, uh, whatever terminology you like, you like to use. Our brothers in the room, I'm sure, are very familiar with this process, right? So read. It says, and if a man entice a maid uh -huh. that is not betrothed, that is not betrothed. What does that mean? To what? It means she's single. All right, she's not betrothed, right? Read on. And lie with her. Uh huh. And lie with her. What do you, What does that mean? Lie with her. Have sex. They had sex, right? So you flirt with a girl, you spit game to her. She's single. She gives it up to you. Read on. He shall surely endow her to be his wife. What does that mean? She's your wife, and you shall surely pay the dowry. Because what have you done through enticing this sister? What have you done? Took away from his household. You mm -hmm. not only that, but you have taken away from his household. But what have you done exactly? Well, you become one with her. You have gone around her father's back. Customarily, you would go to her father about getting married. Right? He would promise y'all would make a deal. Then the dowry would get paid. Then the dowry dowry would be negotiated. Right, but there was a a dowry minimum. Okay, we're just talking about Deuteronomy twenty two. But this dowry would be typically negotiated between husband and father. Then the daughter would be promised, and then they would come together, have a ceremony potentially, day, and do it. But it's just telling you that if you go around the father's back and have sex with a girl, you that's your wife. And you will pay a dowry, though you try to go around the back of the father. You still have to pay a dowry. That's plain and clear and simple in that verse. He's trying to go to that verse to say that if you, that, that dowry that you have to pay is a punishment for you committing a sin. It's, it's a punishment to pay a dowry, but everybody has to pay a dowry for a virgin. So that can't be a punishment. It's just telling you that there's no way of getting around taking a woman a wife and paying her father a dowry for her. There's no way around it. If you have sex with a sister, that is your wife. That's what that proves emphatically in the Bible right now. And it's so important for us to understand that having sex with a sister equals marriage. All the tears and all the emotion that poured out of these sisters that we've seen tonight would have been alleviated if we had would have been raised with the understanding that the person that you, every person you lay down with, for a man, every woman you lay down with is your wife, and for a woman, the first man you lay down with is your husband forever. If that would have been instilled in these sisters from this scripture and instilled in our brothers from this scripture, all that heartbreak would have been totally alleviated. People talk about sex being marriage in a negative light. 
Why? Because they are subservient to these damn women. And they know women want to, to get married in the sight of the white man because that woman's God is the white man. She wants a certificate from the white man. She wants a ring from the white man. And she wants a wedding just like the white man said for you to get married. Got niggas jumping the broom. Like that's some type of honorable or noble tradition when a white man made you jump the broom. Right? So you have certain Israelites who are subservient to that, who cater to women. And this is why they got a million women in their congregation that's single because they push monogamy because they're so because they're trying to cater to these women and they have an influx of women. <laughs> so then was it live what happened? Some type of fornication or whoredom. But I digress from that point. The point is that understanding that sex is marriage is one of the most powerful teachings that you can give to blacks, Hispanics, and Native Indian men. Because that conversion of your mind into understanding how important a sexual act is will cause you to restrain yourself, especially sisters. If a sister knows, well, this is going to be my husband for life if I lay down with this man. She's going to think twice before laying down with this man. She's going to think three and four times. And she's going to begin to value herself more so. And this is what needs to be taught to our people. All right? It, 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 it's so, so anybody trying to take away from that actually is trying to contribute in the furtherance of the sexual irresponsibility, the reproductive irresponsibility of our people. That sexual and or reproductive irresponsibility is why this heartbreak comes. It's why sexually transmitted diseases spread. It's why abortions occur. Being irresponsible. They're not fully understanding how important a sexual act is between man and woman. They don't get it. They have never been taught it. They've been totally dehumanized, dehumanized on plantations we have been for all these generations then we grow up in a society that's over-sexualized, where we are totally, exclusively looked at as sex objects. That's it. That's all we're looked at as. So because of this, we make all these irresponsible choices in life dealing sexually. We get taken advantage of sexually. People get molested sexually, all these various things. But if we just simply understood that sex was marriage, it could alleviate all of it. Right? That was it on that? Uh, <clears throat> Salaki, give me um there was something else. Uh, 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 Genesis 24 and 67. What they'll do is they'll go to the book of Tobit. Who knows where the book of Tobit is at? The apographer. Is is that the law? No. In the book of Tobit, he had a marriage. Did he have a marriage certificate that speaks about something like that in, in Tobit? That's fine. That don't mean I'm going to the white man to get a marriage certificate, though, number one. If you want to get in writing that you're married to such, that's fine. There's nothing wrong with that. But when you start teaching somebody that it's required of them to go to the white man's courthouse and to spend a hundred damn dollars to validate your marriage, that person is disgusting. That person hates God. That person hates black people, period. Hates Hispanics, hates Native Indians, because he's trying to subjugate you to something that bears nothing upon a union between man and wife. Nothing at all. And it's taking you away from what's actually important, which is that bond. Right? Let's go there to, to Genesis 24 and 67. In the book of Genesis 24 and 67. Uh-huh. And Isaac brought her into his mother Sarah's into, tent. Into where? His mother Sarah's tent. Right. And took to his mama house. Go ahead. And took Rebecca, and she became his wife. Oh, we. She did not become his wife at the signing of a piece of paper. She did not become his wife at a ceremony. There was no paper and there was no ceremony. Met a man. They went into a bedroom and they had sex. All right. The same way all of us were created. The same way all of us got with our wives. All right. No different than that. This is how our people, black and Hispanic people, have been getting down for ages. From Genesis, which means what? <laughs> the beginning. From the beginning, where was Adam and Eve's marriage certificate? Where was their ceremony? 
He said he gave him a woman. You understand what I'm saying? And in a trance, he didn't even know what was going on. They had sex. You understand what I'm saying? That's what happened. This is how your nation was made. It's how people are here today. But these people are trying to push a European, so-called European, Edomite standard on you. All right? Because they they worship or they serve unruly women that are that claim to be in the truth but will still hold you to the devil standards instead of hating the devil standards as they should, despising the devil standards as they should. Every so-called black and Hispanic woman that come into this truth should absolutely hate a ring, should hate a marriage certificate, should hate a white dress. She should hate it with all of her heart and every fiber of her being because it's so disgusting and it's not her way of life. Does that mean that she can't have a ceremony? We had ceremony. But ceremonies were not a requirement. Ceremonies were not the standard. Can you make a, a can you write that you have been married and a record in the Hebrew? Of course you can, but you don't have to. If you divorce, there is by law required to have a bill of divorcement. Who can guess why you would need a required bill of divorcement? they can know like officially that you're not dealing with that woman anymore exactly because if she comes around acting single but i've still perceived that she's with you i'm liable to stone that woman to death but if she could go well look he put me away here's a certificate then she doesn't get stoned but nine times out of ten ain't nobody gonna want her right soldier if she was to remarry after that divorce, would she have to pay, would, would, the, would the husband have to pay another dowry? No. no. You don't pay a dowry for a woman that's not a virgin. No. You don't do it. And that's hustling. You mean to tell me her pops gets to bang a nigga two times? <laughs> <laughs> Come on now. Size them up. So I'm looking at the etymology for wed or like wedding, right? Mm -hmm. Everybody always wants this elaborate, fabulous wedding, right? So it goes into it and it, uh, it literally speaks about it's two. Uh, it's two. You know, they got two definitions. One is a is a pledge, or to redeem through uh, you know earnest money, and then another definition is the vow. So when we go into the ancient times, what was that vow or that pledge? Who was it made with? It was made with the man and the father. So it also goes into turning the things upside down because when you go into Numbers the thirtieth chapter, who had rule over the woman? Father. The father did. But nowadays, you got to come to the woman. You got to do all these things. You got to make the pledge to her, you know, as you stand at the altar, reading out of the Bible passage that's not in there. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Right. So, I mean, it's literally to turn things up, upside down, exalt the woman, put her above her father. When she gets into it, the man got to bow down on his knee and, and propose to her, thus putting her over the man. I mean, it's just, it's totally out of order. So the brother's right. A woman should hate a white dress flowers uh, uh, uh either church or park wedding all right by the beach beach, all, say, beach wedding all of it you botanical got? garden but, go ahead but again going with the pledge and the money like that's between a man man and man, man, and man. Yeah. that's right go ahead you see uh remember i told you that i went to that i went to a wedding mm -hmm. come on, come on. so you was right to uh, stating the fact that they're reading something that's not in the bible the, the fraud as slock it the fraud preacher he had the bible and he had a binder over the Bible. Usually, over usually the Bible. they had a Bible open, and then they put the little piece in it, so it looks like it looks like they read out the word. He did. He put he did put the little piece in the Bible, and like more cross, and a, it was just straight up idolatry. I, I, I got a um, my cousin Cameron just got married like maybe a month ago, and he did the same exact thing. We and it's just like how you were saying that little little stuff. You know, in this little room, but they got the Bible, bro. But she had a whole. What's that? Like a whole curriculum on the side inside of this little binder. <laughs> She's reading everything out, and I'm looking like, you know, I got my sword up. I'm like, where is this? At? I'm trying to Google it, trying to find it. And then didn't call, it. didn't call book chapter verse. One that's second, that's our Quran. No, I didn't have nothing. But I do got something to say. Mm -hmm. A lot of times, uh, I mean, my first, my first ever encounter with IUIC before I met mutual. They'll, they'll go to um, Deuteronomy 28 and 48 mm -hmm. and basically try to say, um, okay, I'll read it real fast. Therefore shalt thou serve thy enemies, which the Lord shall send against thee, in hunger and in thirst and in nakedness and in the of all things. 
seed brother and, and want all things. So they'll try to say, if you want that woman, if you want to marry that woman, you got to go to your, you got to go to your enemy to basically do that. Wow. So, you know, that 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 right there is the ultimate slave negro yeah. pastor doctrine i have to go to my enemy like like net like the like like nat turner on a on on birth of a nation you know hey i don't want to marry you you know what i mean hey, can, I, can, I, can, I, can i go see her boss listen man hell no <laughs> you know what i'm saying Hell no. You mean to tell me I'm going to teach a brother, a black and Hispanic brother, that he is a king over the earth. He's a nation of king and priest. He's a, not only a king and priest, a god. <laughs> God's chosen people. But you need to go ask the white man for your woman. <sighs> Nigga, please. You understand what I'm saying? We teach an empowerment, upliftment of black, Hispanic, and Native women. After all the hell that we've gone through. That's what we're teaching, if you have precept, Tyler Marks. It's crazy. And, and, and what's the name? What, what what's the acronym stand for? Israel United and what? Christ. Let's see what Christ said. This is unbelievable. Luke four and eighteen. Ooh, we. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me because He hath anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He hath sent me to heal the brokenhearted. Uh -huh. I mean, how much is it of a brokenhearted thing that you gotta go to another man to see your woman? That, 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 that the most high has put together and that that breaks that with the with, with the most high puts together let no man put together. we'll get there right now <laughs> you, you about to get that mm -hmm. it says to preach deliverance to the captives and recovering of sight to the blind and to set at liberty them that are bruised to preach the acceptable year of the lord man so again it, it, that's not preaching liberation you know to the bruised liberty to the bruised all right, deliverance to the captives. You want us to continue to be captive under the, under our our under our oppression. Our enemy. That's you got, totally I, contrary to Christ. I gotta go to my enemy if I want to. Imagine that. Go ahead. This is the book of Mark, chapter ten, verse nine. What for? Therefore, God has joined together. Uh -huh. Let no slot. Let not man put asunder. So wait a minute. <laughs> What that what they say goes right against what who the world called Christ taught, yet they're supposed to be united in Christ. So I need to understand how I gotta go to a man, but if I'm already with this woman, can't nobody put me in this woman or something. Especially not no damn white man. Are you kidding me? That's that that stuff is crazy. But you know, this is the question that I posed to the brother who I was arguing with. Simply show me in the law where it says I gotta have a marriage certificate. Give it to me in the law. Once we start making this about the law, and again, that don't take away from no other part of the scriptures, but a lot of people will run with certain other parts of the scriptures without understanding. Um, period. That's what happens. So we gotta go back to the law, and the law gotta be the measuring stick, you know. Somebody might have done something in a certain instance, made that uh, that 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 certificate in that instance, and that's fine. And like I, I told everybody on that status, I said, I'm not against marriage ceremonies. I'm not against a marriage certificate. I'm not even against somebody going and getting married in Esau's eyes. I'm against you telling me I have to do any of that. That any of that makes my marriage more valid. I'm laying with this woman. Every night, we're you know what I'm saying we 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 pooling resources, we having kids, we living together, and that's not my wife, <laughs> because the white man said so, because there's not a piece of paper. That's ridiculous, Tazma. Is there anywhere in the law where it says you gotta have a witness to your to your to your, to your marriage? They don't say none. They say if you have sex, you are married, and make sure to pay your father. So guess what? This is Malachi two and fourteen. Yet ye say, wherefore? Because the Lord has been witness between thee and the wife of thy youth. Ooh, we, the Lord has been witness between thee and the wife of thy youth. Go ahead. Against whom thou hast dealt treacherously, uh -huh. yet yet is she thy companion and the wife of thy covenant. Mm -hmm. That's a covenant between you and that woman. That's right. And the most high. Mm -hmm. Got nothing to do with nobody else. Yeah, that's right. So, so, <laughs> so but I have to go. I got to go to the white man. Well, well hold on, Doc. 
let's let's follow the same logic though. In one of all things, that means the white man got to teach you the Bible. It say all it say all things, so I got to learn the Bible for. Mother, dude's got to start using sense here. You know what I mean? If we if you want something, you're gonna go to the white man's store. You understand what I'm saying? Granted, you're gonna pay the white man for your internet, your phone bill. You understand what I'm saying? All that, right? But you mean to tell me, literally, I gotta get everything from the white man? Come on, man. let's be serious. Here. Everything. I gotta get my hair cut from the white man. You know what I'm saying? I gotta I gotta go deal with the, a white woman. <laughs> I gotta get everything from them. That's stupid, man. Anybody who's handling the word of the most high like that and being purposely deceitful and misleading, it's just disgusting. Right, because they feel some type of way, so they have to they have to be misleading. They have to be deal deceitful and crafty because they feel some type of way because what it is is their woman made them go to Esau to get married. That's right. Because them niggas wanted the box and they hold. Yeah, that's right. Talk about it. And then not only that, and that woman don't will not stand another woman coming up in here. You understand what I'm saying? And this, these are the guys with the guys who just have totally submitted to the will of this woman. And they're gonna work with I'm gonna work with her on this, you know. I'm gonna work, I'm gonna work with her on this. Ain't no working with her on certain issues. You see what I'm saying? Or simply not. I got to begin. That's just oh man. Uh, well, go and get an Israelite, uh, Israeli uh, citizenship. <laughs> yeah, go again. Yeah. You 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 want to be a citizen of Israel, right? <laughs> Let's just be totally by Esau. <laughs> oh oh, and and everybody got to go change their last name to Ben Israel. They really push that. These camps that really push you got to go get your name legally changed. They just want you to have everything in the white man's sight, and that's the problem. White man don't validate me being Israelite. God. White man don't validate my marriage. All right? White man can't validate you being a father to your kids. All right? Everybody in this room ain't on their kids' birth certificate. Everybody in this room take care of their kids. <laughs> but to be on the birth certificate mean you take care of kids? You know what it means to sign a birth certificate? Who give me a breakdown, Isaiah? Who signed the bond? You signed him away. You signed the kid away. You signed that bond. You see what I'm saying? Now, I usually always say signature of informant. The, the mama name gonna be there. You up? All right. Mama gave your ass up with no hesitation. Daddy ain't always on that birth certificate, dog. Isaiah. Isaiah, they do the insurance. Make sure they get insurance. That was insurance. It's basically the. Who owns the child? Boom, and it's, it'll say on that on that on that birth certificate. Okay, who who owns this? That's why they're able to um take your kids away. They're able to take your kids from you because a birth certificate was signed. So the ownership of that child is given to the government, into the insurance, into the bank. Over that's why a child can become what's called a ward of the state, right? Like who um holds? I remember holds the movie holds. Uh uh uh. Hector Zeroni, right? He, uh, 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 he was there like he's a ward of the state. He ain't got nobody. Only reason, if, if, if he was a birth certificate was never signed for him, they couldn't even have made him a ward of the state. You see what I'm saying? But with the birth certificate, that there comes that the guy. That's how they was able to get on my little brothers and sisters. When my mom got locked up, that ward of the state, the ward of the state, signed straight in. As soon as she went to jail, the notary was out of the window and everything. Yeah, it, it didn't matter at that point. Uh, we if really these kids are ours we are we have given this is why it says or guard, guardian you're this child's guardian you have been given guardianship over a child that the state owns that's how they make the sign that, that draft right and then you the same thing when you dealing with the draft you see what i'm saying when you're 18 right you have, you have to right a lot of us didn't do it okay i never did it all right but but you see the, now the thing is because we're felons, it don't matter whether we did it or not. You see what I'm saying? Because we can't get drafted anymore anyway. You see what I'm saying? But if you're not, you know, they could come tripping. Maybe, you know? Uh, uh, Yash, you have something? No, I had a question. So. <clears throat> <laughs> I was just thinking that right now. 
but no, uh, it's not. It, it it's not against the white man's law if you don't sign that that uh that it birth is. certificate. No, it, it, no. It, it, it no, 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 because because uh, 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 what's his name? Um, remember them, them Ishmaelites when you had your kid? Remember? It wasn't Ishmaelites. It was Jakes. Oh, it was Jakes. It was Jakes that did it. And they didn't. They refused to sign it. Yeah, yeah, but. Uh, I don't know how long that goes, but I know they, when they was questioning me why I didn't sign it, mm -hmm. they was like, yeah, it was some people a few months ago that was like, the mom or the dad didn't sign it, and they were black. Yeah, I signed yeah, you, have a, you, you have a choice, but if, if, when it comes down to it, you can get, you can get Yeah, 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 they, 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 they can come true, because of course they, something, somebody got to sign it, you see what I'm yeah, saying? Yeah, yeah. So usually mom sign it. Like yeah, they, they, could, they could try to play with you because... They're having the, the totalitarianism over you. You see what I'm saying? Usually, you know, moms can sign it or whatever. C can that, you know, is it necessarily wrong to sign it? I mean, you know, you may have a custody dispute, whatever. It is. Each brother to each his own. I sign. I, I, when you're a juvenile, uh -huh. you go to the juvenile. Like, you know, when you're juvenile. Juvie. Yeah, they make you sign it. Oh, what? The, the draft? That's crazy. In Juvie, they make a nigga sign the draft? They make you sign it. Oh, I, in college, I signed college. it right after I signed the, uh, college For college football. For co I had to do. That I is, cr that is crazy. You see, they trying to they trying to make sure they get you in yeah, if, they, if they need to. The reason the draft ain't being looming like that is because so many people are voluntarily going into the service. But so now. I got to obey the laws of the land, right? I got to do everything the white man says. So I got to sign up for that draft. It's what? Do, do, don't we know that that the third world's war is coming? Do we know that Satan's angels are? Give me, give me, give me Revelation twelve. Okay, so you telling me that I have to join Satan's army to fight against the Hamashiach Yahweh Shai who will call Christ? I I have to do it. <laughs> if I have to obey the, the everything the white man say, everything, right? Like your brother said, I'm not. We don't sell drugs. We don't do nothing crazy like that, of course, right? But you mean to tell me I gotta? I mean, if a nigga don't wear his seatbelt, I wouldn't advise nobody to wear your seatbelt. But I mean, are you a sinning by not wearing your seatbelt? Go ahead. We're about twelve and about um, what ten, nine, ten, and there was a war in heaven. Oh, verse 7. This uh -huh. is uh, Revelation 12 and 7. Uh -huh. And there was a war in heaven. There's a war that's getting ready to happen. You're going to see it in heaven, meaning in the sky. Read. Michael and his angels. Michael, all right? Tells you in Daniel 12 and 1, Michael shall arise. Michael is an archangel under Hamashiach. Yeah, which I read. Fought against the dragon. He's going to fight against the dragon. These people are telling you. That you have to sign up to fight with the dragon against the angels of God, against Yahweh Shai's host, against the same army that's been assembled in heaven to save you. You have to counter them. Go ahead. And the dragon fought in, in his angels. Uh huh. And the dragon fought in his angels. Who are the dragon's angels? Fallen. Not fallen angels. They're military. Jets, jets when what it's, happens when uh, somebody from the army dies, they call them a what? A fallen, a fallen angel. angel. That's a fallen angel. They fold the flag over his damn coffin. He's a fallen angel. That's how Frank Lucas got all this dope into America. Wow. Fallen angel. I was just watching American Gangster again the other day. They weren't even bringing bodies over. They weren't even bringing it. It was full of dope. Or they had this false bottom. Fallen angel. Nobody's going to crack that coffin open. Are you kidding? Who would do that? Who wants to see a dead body? Okay, this ain't this ain't a uh, boys in the hood. Okay, you don't want to see no. You know what's in there. Y'all don't want to see it. Especially an honor. You know, yeah, so called honorable in this country, right? But these people are telling you, if we just follow their logic and line of thinking, you got to go sign up for that draft. And when they call you to duty, your country now, you got to go fall in line for that duty. All right, any brother I know that's in the service. To come to our camp, brother, you need to get out. Get out and go ahead. Yeah, like the one brother uh, from uh, Washington who's about to, Lord willing, be a part of the Sakari Seattle. Uh, he, when he started learning the truth four months ago, 
he got a dishonorable discharge out the army. That's a, I'm out of there. I, I can't he, do this. Praise your house. <laughs> you better praise the most high you got discharged out of that army. Happy. Other brothers is trying to get out. I know brothers that's in that's trying to get out. You better get out of that army. Because that army is getting ready to fight against your savior and the angels. That with that army getting that army is getting ready to be totally destroyed. You don't want to be a part of that army. Or you want to be a part of the army. You want to be a part of those that are assembled. London Mashiach, I wish I was a world called Christ. That's who you want to be. You don't want to be the nigga that's fighting for the white man with that camel on. That ain't who you want to be, Zanakaria. Yes, sir. If there's a draft. Or go, or go to prison. Or it might, yeah, it might, might not be a draft because of the influx of people who are signing up for the military. Right. People are just dying. The military is turning niggas down. They're saying, oh, you got a visible tattoo? Oh, we don't want you. That's how many people they have. They don't want you. You see? Go ahead. They're starting to not, uh, they're not, they're they're starting about tattoos. Yeah, they about don't, the tattoo, they don't, they don't care no more. I seen dudes with tattoos on their necks. And they up in the military. Yeah, they're starting, they're starting to get more lax on certain things, Isaiah. I also heard uh, before that you couldn't join the army when you had a flat foot. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And basically, if, 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 and if you could, um, if you have flat feet and you can slip through the cracks on the back and you you get cashed out for it. You see what I'm saying? You get a whole lot of money if you got flat feet. You see what I'm saying? I know a couple, uh, my, my woman's stepdad, he had flat feet, so he gets he gets chipped in every month because they let him in the army with flat feet. Yeah, they let him in, they're letting him in now. They just get him like arc support. Arc support. You see that, uh, the guy? And whoever is not in the military, they can't make it. They're all in flux and being police officers now. That's all you see on Charlie on the Charlie's on the bus and sign up to be SPPD, want to be an officer. That's all you see on everything. Mm -hmm. They're trying to get you to be the cops, trying to get you to come against your own people, essentially. That's okay. the plan, Tuzma. I was gonna say, man, it seems like when you think about it like that, draft might come back. Yeah, uh, what is that? It might. Revelation two and ten. They don't shall cast some of you in the prison. Mm -hmm. So it's almost like I'm gonna put that pressure on you. It's like you're you gonna be put in a position where you gotta choose the side. You are gonna go and fight with the devil, or you're gonna be cast into prison into prison. You know what I mean? You gotta go through that tribulation and remain faithful with the most high. That's very I, true. I, I wouldn't be surprised if they really start pushing it where it's like, hey, draft time. You know. I was talking to the cap about that. He was all like, listen, I'm going to prison. I'm starting Hebrew. It was like, can't be prison. <laughs> I said, I'll be there right <laughs> with you. <laughs> Lined up on yeah. posts. Because who, know? know, who knows what they're going to try? Satan got so many devices. Ain't no telling what he's going to get ready to try to do. We know some of it, but we don't know all the intricacies of exactly how he's going to roll everything out. You see what I'm saying? Dude want to ask me. You know, how how is it well, logistically how is the market of beast gonna be rolled out the same way he wrote they rolled everything out? They just gonna do it. They got phases. Same way they got then got your chip. Instead of having the chip in you, they got it in your car. Now in damn near every car reader have it. Or used to conveniently swipe. Now you gotta chip read. Yeah, it, so you know? Fast, mm -hmm. You see what I'm saying? That's what's going on now. So the same way they could just roll that out and standard out, and that's the new standard in the earth. Pull it out, putting it in. It's quite easy. The God. It's just like with, um, with the internet. You know, when we first doing dial up, it was it was just dial up, and then it came with Wi Fi. Wi Fi just rolled over to everything. I even got to use dial up, and we use the land, you know, everything for it now. You see what I'm saying? All they do is roll it out. They just roll everything out, phases and stages. And it just every time they do it, it becomes easier. The next step becomes easier. The next level becomes easier. You know what I'm saying? You can't even use the antenna TV no more. It ain't analog no more. It's, everything is digital now. You got to have a damn digital antenna. You see what I'm saying? It's that easy. Finish that. Or that was it on that. Give me, uh, we read Genesis 24 and 67. Okay. Okay, well, let's go here. We go here. This is a, a article I want to go into a little bit. Same as BK. 
Haitians in San Diego. Crazy. And this is what and, and this is why. Because they're running from the, the alleged UN peacekeepers having a child molestation ring. Why they're running to America. Okay, let's read about this because this is crazy. You're, you're great United Nations, right? You're supposed to love and bring freedom to the world. Unite everybody. Look, look at this. Look, look, let's look at a couple of these ex. Y'all want to hear these excerpts real quick? I don't even have breasts. Telling investigators from ages 12 to 15, she had sex with nearly 50 peacekeepers, which are UN soldiers, including a commandant who gave her. Guess how much he gave her? Let me make a guess at how much he gave her. Seventy-five cents. This is what's going on. This is this is what's going on. This is sick. Okay, and this is going back to us being over sexualized in the flesh. Hold that, Matthew twenty-four and twenty-eight. Um, I'm gonna read this. Twelve to fifteen. And it's, I'm gonna be honest with you, they're being generous. I know it goes young because I done brought out articles, girls eight. You see what I'm saying? So let's read it. It says, in the ruins of a tropical hideaway where jet setters once sipped rum under the Caribbean sun, the abandoned children tried to make a life for themselves. They begged and scavenged for food, but they never could scrape together enough to beat back the hunger until the UN peacekeepers moved in a few blocks away. The man who came from a faraway place and spoke a strange language offered the Haitian children cookies and other snacks. Sometimes they gave them a few dollars, but the price was high. Sri Lankan, who is Sri Lankan? What nation are the Sri Lankans? This is a, this is a bonus question. They're not gooks. Close. You said what? Nope. Come on, man. Y'all got an Elam. They're Elamites. Sri Lanka is an island off the coast of India. Okay, they're just you take a look at them; they look just like Elamites. So, um, so you know they for cookies and snacks and a couple dollars. You know they're having sex with with girls and boys. It says sometimes they gave them a few dollars, but the price was high. The Sri Lankan peacekeepers wanted sex from girls and boys as young as twelve. Okay, so it's, it's so Esau. That's why the scriptures speak about a conspiracy by all the heathen against us all of them so you wonder why we have a hatred for the east indian man a hatred for these people of sri lanka it's well deserved because everywhere we are somebody is going to come and oppress us and take advantage of us and devour us everywhere all right that's the plan of every nation give me first maccabees uh, 2 and 10 before we go any further and this is via um independent.co.uk very reliable news source okay <clears throat> go ahead get that this is the book of first maccabees 2 and 10 uh-huh what nation hath not had a part in her kingdom what nation ain't had a part in it people come and complain oh man you know why you guys mean to those somalians what did the asians ever do to you everybody's had a part in this man Everybody's had a part in the downfall of black, Hispanic, and Native Indian. So everybody going to get what they deserve for that. Every damn nation. Go ahead. So I, and gotten of her spoils. They gotten of her spoils. Praying upon little children and, and having a child sex damn ring. That's praying play, upon our spoils. We are the damn spoils. Read. All her ornaments are taken away. Uh-huh. Of a free woman, she has become a bond become slave. A slave, right? So I'm gonna continue. I don't even have breasts, said one girl, uh, known as uh, victim number one. She told you and investigators that over the next three years, from ages 12 to 15, she had sex with nearly 50 peacekeepers, including a commandant who gave her 75 cents. Sometimes she slept in UN trucks on the base next to the decaying resort whose once glamorous buildings were being overtaken by jungle. Victims like victim number one is rare. An Associated Press investigation of UN missions during the past 12 years found nearly 2,000 allegations of sexual abuse and exploitation by peacekeepers and other personnel around the world, signaling the crisis is much, uh, much larger than previously known. 
More than 300 of the allegations involved children. The AP found, but only a fraction of the alleged perpetrators served jail time. Nobody is doing time on it. Nobody cares about, you know, brothers and sisters being raped. Legally or, or being exploited. Because like I said, it's, it's rape, but it's also exploitation. I'm going to an area where I know these people are some of the poorest people in the world. So I'm going to offer them things and take advantage of the fact that they are disenfranchised. That they un so that's that's not necessarily rape, but it is sexual exploitation. You see what I'm saying? Legally, the UN is in a bind. It has no jurisdiction over peacekeepers. So you create a United Nations conglomerate of various countries. You then charter uh, soldiers from these countries and create what you call peacekeeping units, but you don't have jurisdiction to govern these units that you created. An operation that you created, you can't govern it. It's not under your jurisdiction. That's, That's how we know it's coming here because they don't want to use the American troops to when martial law happens. They don't want to use the American troops, so they're going to be using the UN troops. UN troops. And that same just going to be, that's why the scriptures say, uh, houses shall be spoiled and wives ravished. Mm -hmm. And plenty of it's going to be a lot to do with the uh, UN troops. Uh, he ain't lying. They got a knack for it already. Yeah, they're rapists. Every every army that you go in, these people are rapists. They was over there in, in um, Iraq and in Afghanistan. Right? Raping the men, too. All right? The white man is a faggot. We, we know that, right? Come on. That's the white man. Like. He, he loves to display what he's done. He wants to rape a grown man and take a picture of him smiling. That's how sick this devil is. And he's not alone in his sickness. The Sri Lankan man is sick as hell as damn. So East Indian man is a damn sicko. The Asian man, forget about it. Hamite. Who knows what they into? You understand what I'm saying? Right? So, uh, Legally, the UN is in a bind. It has no jurisdiction over peacekeepers, leaving punishment to the countries that contribute the troops. So the punishment of this country is not the UN who has chartered these troops. It's not Haiti where these crimes took place in, but it's good old Sri Lanka where these individuals come from, which, let's be serious here. Sri Lankans are going to waste their time punishing these guys for the crimes they committed against poor Haitian girls and boys. Yeah, right. That'll never happen, right? So as we go on, um, the Associated Press interviewed alleged victims, current and former UN officials and investigators, and sought answers from 23 countries on the number of peacekeepers who face such allegations and what, if anything, was done to investigate. With rare exceptions, or it's like it, with rare exceptions, few nations responded to repeated requests while the names of those found guilty are kept confidential, making accountability impossible to determine. This is what we're dealing with, right? Without agreement for widespread reform and accountability from the UN's member states, solutions remain elusive. At least 134 Sri Lankan peacekeepers exploited nine children in a sex ring from 2004 to 2007, according to an internal UN report obtained by the Associated Press, meaning the UN has recognized that 134 of their quote unquote peacekeepers for three years had a child sex ring. The UN officially is on record in recognizing this as a fact. And that was 10 years ago. And this report is now just surfacing, right? Uh, in the wake of the report, 114 peacekeepers were sent home. The same thing that happens here when a so-called white cop or an Asian cop, in the case of Philandro Castile, kills a so-called black, Hispanic, or Native Indian. Well, just, you know, just go home. This will blow over. Don't worry about it. We might transfer you. You see what I'm saying? That's what happens. It's the same thing. Now watch this. 114 peacekeepers were sent home. None was ever in prison. So it's been acknowledged by the UN that a three-year child sex ring was being run. And nobody went to jail. Everybody just went home. And it's just great to be a heathen. You can just do all the wickedness and commit all the crimes that you want. To and you, to Jake. Yeah, to, uh, to, as long as it's the Israelites, right? And you just get sent home. It's like in school. You just 
you, you just suspend it. It's all right. You can come back in five days. You'll be all right. This is the life that he didn't live, and uh, and we're not supposed to have animosity towards these people. Hey, whose possessors raped them? Yeah, ra ra not just slay them, rape them. <laughs> it's a tremendous point, huh? right? So now it says, in March, UN Secretary General Antonio uh, Gutierrez announced new measures to tackle sexual abuse and exploitation by UN peacekeepers and other personnel. But the proclamation had a depressingly familiar ring. More than a decade ago, the United Nations commissioned a report that promised to do much the same thing, yet most of the reforms never materialized. Ten years ago, they made these same empty promises to our people. Nothing ever happened, right? This is we we give me give me um lamentation four and I believe seventeen. Lamentations chapter four verse seventeen. As for us, as for us. Black, Hispanic, and Native Indian, the Israelites, according to the Bible, read. Our eyes as yet fail. Our eyes fail. Why do our eyes fail? Read on. For our vain help. Uh-huh, because we don't have help. We want help. And the UN makes promises. And the United States government makes promises. Trump, Obama, they all make promises. The pastor makes promises. Read. In our watching, uh -huh. we have watched for a nation that could not save us. But we keep watching and looking for somebody to save us that will not and cannot. And that's what this is with the UN, right? Um, for a full two years after the promises were made, the children in Haiti were passed around from soldier to soldier. This was after the promise was made. And in the years since, peacekeepers have been accused of sexual abuse the world over. In response to the Associated Press, investigation the un's head of field support said wednesday the uh, international body was aware of shortcomings in the system we believe we are advancing in the right direction especially with the secretary general's new approach said atul Kher, uh, who heads the un department in charge of peacekeeper discipline and conduct improving the assistance uh provided to victims who are at the heart of our response is fundamental allegedly Mr. Kerr also said the organization was working with member states to hold perpetrators to account. In one particularly grim case in Haiti, a teenage boy said he was gang raped in 2011 by Uruguayan peacekeepers, which these would be predominantly Spanish, so-called Spanish, so-called white men, right? Because we know Uruguay, it's got a lot of our people indigenously, but it's majority like uh, uh, Spaniard Edomites that's down there. Right, like Uruguay and like Argentina, these are those are countries that are predominantly white, as opposed to like a uh, uh, Chile, uh, Mexico, uh, Dominican Republic, where our people are the majority. These are areas where white people are the majority. Spaniards are the majority, and in the case of Argentina, like a lot of Italians and Germans and Jewish are down there. Right. So it says who filmed alleged assault on the cell phone? They gang rape a boy. This is a so-called, this is a priest of God we're talking about. So-called Haitian boy, Levite boy, gang raped him and recorded on himself. Must bring this up. Go ahead, go ahead. Joel 3 and 3. Uh -huh. They have cast lots for my people Ooh, we. and have given a boy for an harlot. A boy for a harlot. And <laughs> sold a girl for wine that they might drink. You see that? That's what they said. 75 doing. cents in that case. Mm -hmm. 75 cents. You see that? Absolutely disgusting. But the Bible told us all this, which is why we have to come back to it. Because it told us it was gonna happen, it surely happened. Now we gotta work our way back out of it. Through the spirit of power of Yahweh, that's the only way. He got a few seconds. Go ahead, Art. This is Lamentations 5 and 11. They ravished the women in Zion. And the maids- You see that? They ravished them when they rape our women, man. Read. And the maids in the cities uh -huh. of Judah. You see that? That's what happened. Seven kings. Right. I mean, it happened ahead. a lot with the with the with the northern with the kingdom. North. Oh, yeah. But they love that black woman, man. I'll tell you that. <laughs> they love it. They love that black woman. That's it's right. total polar opposite of. Them. Yeah, that's right. So they love it. That's right. Hey, and they love it. <laughs> they love it. <laughs> yeah, that's right. 
Verse down the truth. Right? So it say, it say, uh, dozens of Haitian women also say they were raped, and dozens more had what is euphemistically called survival sex in a country where most people live on less than 250 a day. So they just having sex because they're in that predicament to where this is the only way they can survive, they feel like. It's like a lot of sisters now, they out being hoes, selling a body because they're looking at it as a survival tactic, right? Haitian lawyer Mario Joseph has been trying to get compensation for victims of a deadly cholera strain, right? So anybody know about that cholera case that hit Haiti, killed a lot of people. Now, it was brought in by the UN peacekeepers from Nepal. These are all Elamites, the people of Nepal, the people of India, the people of Sri Lanka. These are all the people of Elam, all right? A cholera strain linked to uh, Nepalese peacekeepers that killed an estimated 10,000 people trying to get child support for about a dozen Haitian women left pregnant by peacekeepers. Are these, these pieces of garbage raping our women. They are knocking our women up and giving our women the curse of their satanic heathen seed. Right? And of course, they're not going to get no child support. Are you kidding me? Unless, you, unless you're trying to put a black man on child support, you're not going to win, black woman. It's not going to happen. All right? It ain't set up like that. Right? So it says, imagine if the UN was going to the United States and raping children and bringing cholera, Mr. Joseph said in Port-au-Prince. Human rights aren't just for rich white people. Outrage if this was happening to white people. It would, we would be on the cusp of a nuclear holocaust if this was happening to white people. Eyes on. Exactly. Now it's a medical issue because of white people dying. We can rehabilitation because white people are on drugs. We have to help white people. We can't just deny black people now because we're covertly racist. So we are letting blacks and Hispanics come in now as well and get rehabilitated. But when you look at the top and the upper echelon of rehabilitation, not your run of the mill crap, you got to spend a whole lot of money that blacks and Hispanics don't have to get rehabilitated. You understand what I'm saying? So it says uh, United States Senator Bob Corker agrees. The Tennessee Republican who chairs the Senate Foreign Relations Committee has been calling for reforms of the United Nations. He may well get them under President Donald Trump, yeah. whose administration has proposed a 31% reduction of U.S. foreign aid and, and diplomacy budget. Mr. Corker and U.N. Ambassador Nikki Haley want a review of all missions, which what is that going to do? Um, Mr. Corker recalled his disgust at hearing the U.N. sexual abuse cases uncovered last year in the Central African Republic. If I heard that the U.N. peacekeeping mission was coming near my home in Chattanooga, I'd be on the first plane out of here to go back to protect my family. Well, it's going to come a time when, like his brother said, the U.N. troops are likely going to come to America. All right, because these are people from other countries, and, and there's something about these other countries. And they're already seeing, it's undeniable, they got the proof, video proof and pictures. The U.N. trucks are already here. Mm -hmm. So, bring it on. Looks like they're setting the stage for some. And the thing is, these other countries, they hate America. Everybody hates the whore. All right? So they ain't going to have no problem coming down, cracking American skulls raping American women. They don't, they don't see any issue with that. You see what I'm saying? So it says, um, the Habitation uh, uh, Electric Resort was once well known throughout Port-au-Prince as a lush refuge amid the capital's grimy alleyways. During his heyday in the 1980s, celebrities like Mick Jagger and Jackie Onassis would perch by the pool and stroll past the property's voodoo temple. Which is why there's a lot of this is happening because it's damn voodoo our people are doing. Um, by 2004, the result was a decrepit clutch of buildings, and several children, either orphaned or abandoned by their parents, were living in its ruins. Victim number one met other victims. Two girls referred to in the UN report as victim number two, and victim number three, and a young boy, victim number eight. The boy initially supported them by occasionally bringing food from his aunt, but they were often hungry. The peacekeepers had arrived 
that year as a part of a new mission to help stabilize Haiti in the wake of uh, President John Patron Aristide's oust, ouster. This is why I've recommended this, this movie before, and, I, and I'm going to recommend it again to everybody. It's called The Ghost of City Soleil, all right? And if you watch that movie, you'll understand what this is talking about. Uh, John Patron Aristide's ouster. Uh, Aristide was a, he declared himself president for life two times in Haiti. First time in the early 90s. Um, and the white, the white man came and ousted him. He was able to get back in. He came again and ousted him again in 2004. And this set the stage for the UN to come in. The UN was not in Haiti doing anything before 2004. All right. So because he was going against the grain of what Clinton wanted and what the Bushes wanted, they tried to get him out of there both times. All right. So you can understand. So if you watch that movie, it'll give you an insight from the perspective of Haitian people. OK, on the ouster and things like that. All right. And what the white man did, this is what happened. The U.N. said he, they got Aristide out. But Aristide, basically the way he moved is he had gangs that did his work for him. These gangs predominantly operated in the area in, in Port-au-Prince, Haiti, called City Soleil, one of the worst hoods you ever see or see it in, in, if you watch the movie. So all these niggas in City Soleil, they was armed heavily, military-grade weaponry, right? So they oust Aristide. The UN come in and say, look, just give all y'all guns up. We'll leave y'all alone. So they got a Haitian coon that's set up as the leader. So one of the gang leaders on the phone with him, they went to school or something like that. So he's like, all right, it's all good. We, we want peace. All the brothers saying, we want peace. We want peace. We'll give you the guns. There's a white woman. One of the brothers is dealing with a white woman, French woman. She told him niggas straight up, do not give them your guns. Right? The white woman understands the play here. Negro is so weak for a white person. It's crazy. And so trusting in white people is crazy. That white woman said, she said, give them your, give them your old guns. Find your old gun. Give them the niggas your old guns. And y'all keep the new guns. Them niggas gave their guns up. What you think happened the next day? You okay. ain't came through spraying. All right? Ain't one of them niggas alive today. Every one of them dead. Every nigga you see on that movie, you watching a movie, you fall in love with these characters. All of them dead. By the UN. You understand what I'm saying? You had some up? Uh, yeah, uh, I the name of the city. City is, is, is like this. C-I-T-E. That's city. And then Soleil. S-O-L-E-I-L. The Ghost of City Soleil. The Wyclef Jean produced the movie. Um, you on Netflix? Mm, I don't believe so. It's on YouTube, though. It's on YouTube. They had a whole movie on YouTube now. The Ghosts of City Soleil. Um, and it's it's a documentary, but it, it it's it's formatted like a movie still. You see what I'm saying? So you're watching a documentary, but it's still like it's like a movie, damn near. You see what I'm saying? That came out probably like 05, 06, no later than 07. So um, but it, it's going to give you that whole background of how the UN came and took over. So that is how they began their reign of terror. And their reign of terror just recently ended because these sexual allegations is, is becoming so frequent. You understand what I'm saying? That, you know, they can't turn a blind eye to it anymore. Right. So it says, uh, the Sri Lankan, the Sri Lankans numbering about 900 troops. Landed in his an, uh, uh, in a historically unstable country in the grip of a scattered violent a grip of scattered violence and kidnappings and a broken government ill suited to confront the chaos. Some of the peacekeepers in the Sri Lankan contingent were based near the former resort. In August 2007, the UN received complaints of suspicious interactions between Sri Lankan soldiers and Haitian children. United Nations investigators then interviewed nine victims as well as witnesses while the sex ring was still active. Thing to still be active during this time, and this is 10 years ago. Victim number two, who was 16 when the UN team interviewed her, told them she had sex with the Sri Lankan commander at least three times, describing him as an overweight, as overweight with a mustache and a gold ring on his middle finger. 
She said she often showed her a, he often showed her a picture of his wife. The peacekeepers also taught her some uh, Sinhalese so she could understand and express uh, sexual innuendo. The children even talked to one another in Sinhalese when the UN investigators were interviewing them. They were teaching them how to speak their language, basically. So, they could get the so well, they were teaching. They were teaching these people who the, the, the brothers and sisters they was molesting to speak their language, so she can talk sexually to him in the language that he understands. Like, first off, nigga, don't you want to hear her talking French? <laughs> I thought French was the sexy language. I can only imagine how this East Indian language sounds. You know what I'm saying? Do 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 <laughs> the hell is wrong with this sick old man? You see what I'm saying? Uh, vi <laughs> victim three uh, identified 11 Sri Lankan troops through photographs of one whom she said was a corporal with a distinctive bullet scar between his armpit and waist. Victim four, who was 14, said she had sex with the soldiers every day in exchange for money, cookies, or juice. You gotta understand something. Give me Malachi 2. Malachi 2 real quick. The book of Malachi. Give me, um. You started the No, we don't read the whole thing. Um, where are we at? Uh. uh This is about Levi and his three. I think. No, this is the whole thing, but I'm looking for one verse in particular. Uh, nine. That's why I need nine. This is the book of Malachi, chapter 2, verse 9. Uh -huh. Therefore have I also made you com uh, com contemptible, contemptible uh -huh. and base. And what? Base. Meaning what? Low. The Lord has brought the tribe of Levi very low. You know you've been brought in low when you got to have sex for cookies and chips. That's a low level to be brought to. Right? Read on. The people. Before all the people. Right? Read on. According as ye have not kept my ways, uh -huh. but have been partial in uh, my law. That's what led us to this point as a so-called Haitian. is partiality in the judgment of the law of the Most High as the priest's. Of the Most High. This is why it's of such importance that the tribe of Levi wake up right now. You know, um, more and more Levi brothers is waking up. A lot of them is coming here to San Diego, so they're gonna have to wake up because they're gonna have to keep seeing us. All right. And if they don't talk English, they talk Spanish, and we got brothers that speak Spanish. You know what I'm saying? We got the Creole flyers now. You understand what I'm saying? They're gonna have to get this because. If we don't hurry up, we, this is just going to keep, 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 keep on happening. We in such a bad way when you got 14-year-old girls fucking for cookies, man. That's, this is, this is a whole nother level of, of low that we've been brought to the God. You had something? Um, you know, we heard sisters talking a lot about tonight, you know, about them finding their sexuality themselves, mm -hmm. doing things themselves. To themselves. To themselves. Con. And, and it's hurting me right now to even just listen to these Haitian sisters go through a, a situation where they don't have a choice. You're nine, ten years old. You're fucking for slot. You're having sex for juice and cookies seven days out the week. Seven. You you having sex for juice and cookies seven days out the week? Your parents are nowhere. <laughs> you don't. You see what I'm saying? And, and this is the cold thing about it. this. Is how you know how low Levi has been brought. You could, you brothers and sisters have gone through a lot in a lot of almost all the twelve trials. It's not gonna be twisted, but you ain't heard nothing like this happen in America. You ain't heard to where there's just really nobody. <laughs> there's not no auntie house, grandma house. It's nothing going on here. I gotta have sex for cookies every day, and then that's all you give me. Cookie? Can, can she get a sandwich? You see what I'm saying? She needs nutrients. You know what I mean? And it's just for some cookies, man. This is crazy. I, I read on a different article. One girl was talking about she was having, it was an eight-year-old, talking about she was having sex for rice. You see what I'm saying? And she would bring the rice home every day. It would be like enough rice, enough rice to where they could all eat 
for that day. You see what I'm saying? You mean to tell me you these little girls are having sex for cookies? Man, this is that's that's low. We've been brought low. Um and and give me give me that in in in, in Matthew, what I had you holding Matthew. Real quick, yeah. I want to save it to the end, but it just needs to come out now. Go ahead. 28, I believe. This is the book of Matthew, chapter 24, verse 28. Uh-huh. For wheresoever the carcass is, read on. There will be the eagles uh -huh. be gathered together. You see that? So that's our dead body. Us in a state of spiritual death, we have predators that are trying to come and feast on our carcass. All right, and those are these other nations. So these Elamites, these Sri Lankans, they're not exempt from that. The eagles are there. So it's not just a white man, it's multiple eagles. It's multiple predatory birds, all right, that feast and scavenge upon dead bodies. You see what I'm saying? That's our people. So I'm gonna continue. It says, uh um, she explains, or, or during her interview with investigators, another young victim, victim number seven, received a phone call from a Sri Lankan peacekeeper. She explained that the soldiers would pass along her number to incoming contingent members who would then call her. So they gave her a phone and just had her line bumping, you know, when niggas was coming in, they could, you know, go see her. Disgusting. The boy, victim number eight, said he had sex with more than 20 Sri Lankans. Most would remove their name tags before taking him to UN military trucks. Oh, God, when he gave them oral sex, or oh, was sodomized by it. Another boy, victim number nine, was 15 when his encounters began. Over the course of three years, he said he had sex with more than 100. Notice the boys are having the highest numbers here. All right? Because these other nations are faggots. All right? Uh, over the course of three years, he had sex with more than 100 Sri Lankan peacekeepers, averaging about four a day, investigators said. Under Haitian law, having sex with someone under 18 is statutory rape. UN codes of conduct also prohibit exploitation. The sexual acts described by the nine victims are simply too many to be presented exhaustively in this report, especially since each claimed multiple sexual partners at various locations where the Sri Lankan contingents were deployed throughout Haiti over several years, the report said. Investigators showed the children more than 1,000 photographs that included pictures of Sri Lankan troops and locations of where the children had sex with the soldiers. Evidence shows from late 2004 uh, mid uh, uh, to mid-October 2007, at least 134 military members of the current and previous Sri Lankan contingents sexually exploited and abused at least nine Haitian children. After the report was filed, 114 Sri Lankan peacekeepers were sent home, putting an end to the sex ring. Yeah, right, it, it has to still exist. But the sexual exploitation visited upon Haiti's people didn't stop there. This is a long article. Uh, 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 Janela Jean said uh, she was a 16-year-old virgin when a Brazilian peacekeeper, again, a lot of these peacekeepers from these places, Uruguay, Brazil, these are Portuguese and Spanish individuals, all right, when you take a look at their army. Okay, usually they don't even let our people into some of these armies, especially to do UN work. Peacekeeper lured her to a UN compound three years ago with a smear of a peanut butter on bread. She lured her just with some peanut butter on her bread. And also, now, even with that being said, a lot of times it'd be Edomites in these um, in these armies for, for uh, uh, countries that purport to be Israelite countries. At the same time, our people still partake in this as well, all right, because we've been bred in that, like what the sister was talking about when we was at the show earlier. A lot of them sisters were victimized by brothers. You see what I'm saying? But the way that that happened was through our victimization dur during, you know, uh, colonial times, during the plantations and things like that, right? Um, raped her at gunpoint and left her pregnant. She finds herself constantly in tears. Some days I imagine strangling my daughter to death, she said in an interview under the shadow of banana palms near the former Jacques Mel base. And this is, you see what I'm saying? Jacques Mel, this is where my family is from in Haiti. You see what I'm saying? So who knows the type? Some of my relatives could be going and subjugating to the same exact thing. This is widespread because we was in Port-au-Prince. Jack Mel is in the South. 
You understand what I'm saying? That's far from Port-au-Prince. So this is widespread throughout the entire country, right? With her, uh, with her were three other women who said they were they were raped by peacekeepers. One of them sat on her heels, scraping coconut from his shell into a, a large cauldron of water and corn, the barest of meals for the women and their small children. Admiral Admir uh, Sabrino of Brazil's armed forces said, uh, said at a conference in London that his force had no such cases of rape, sexual abuse, or sexual exploitation. I know, that sounds good. Um, but like many, John did not report the rape. Nearly a dozen women interviewed by the AP or the Associated Press, said they were too scared to report the crimes out of fear that they would be blamed or worse, would meet their victimizers again. And of course, this is the constant struggle victimized individual, male and female, will all, always talk about. The fear of saying something, right? Because of the power that their perpetrator had. You see what I'm saying? In doing so, they're afraid of the power that they believe they have. The Associated Press found that 150 allegations of abuse and exploitation by UN peacekeepers and other personnel were reported in Haiti alone in 2004 and 2016, out of the worldwide total of nearly 2,000. Aside from Sri Lanka, aside from the Sri Lankan sex ring in Haiti, some perpetrators were jailed for other cases. Alleged abusers came from Bangladesh, another Elamite country, Brazil, Jordan, Ishmael, Nigeria, Hamedic, Pakistan, more Elamites, Uruguay, a lot of them is Spaniards, Sri Lanka, Elam again. <coughs> According to UN data and interviews, more countries may have been involved, but the United Nations only started disclosing alleged perpetrators' nationalities after 2015. So going back, the eagles are gathered around a carcass, and what nation have not had a part in this? They all have a part. They all have raped our women. They all have molested our children. They all have robbed and spoiled us. They all have something coming to them from the most high force, right? The litany of abuses is long. And uh, in July 2011, four Uruguayan peacekeepers, after their commanding officer allegedly gang raped a Haitian teenager, the men also filmed the alleged attack on their phones, which went viral on the internet. The men never faced trial in Haiti. Four of the five were convicted in Uruguay of private violence, a lesser charge, Uruguayan officials said at the time that it was a prank gone wrong and no rape occurred. Wow. Uh, the following year, three Pakistanis attached to the U.N.'s police uh, units uh, in Haiti were allegedly involved in the rape of a mentally disturbed, a disabled 13-year-old in the northern city of, uh, of Ganeve. Uh, uh, U.N. officials went to Haiti to investigate, but the Pakistanis abducted the boy to keep him from detailing the abuse that had gone on for more than a year, according to Peter Gallo, a former UN investigator familiar with the case. Finally, the men were tried in a Pakistani military tribunal and eventually sent back to Pakistan. In theory, the tribunal could have allowed for better access to witnesses, but it is unclear whether any were called. The Pakistani authorities also refused to allow the UN to observe the proceedings. In the end, one man was sent to prison for a year, according to uh, Ariane uh, Quintier, a spokeswoman for the Haiti mission. So as we see, I mean, we're just getting raped, just getting abused, just getting exploited. Nothing happens. At most, a slap on the wrist. Totally disgusting. All right, but this is where we at as a people. And to get out of this hole, we, we, we have to seek true spiritual rebirth and, and conversion of what you would call repentance. You know, through the Holy Spirit to understand the scriptures because this all this we we'll be reading about is only going to continue to happen. It's the same thing that's been happening since these crackers got off these boats and hit these shores and got the northern kingdom, came to Africa, got the southern kingdom. It's the only thing that's happened. Sexual exploitation being primed with our people, Tazamama. Go ahead. Uh, it's Isaiah 42 and 22. This is a people robbed and spoiled. They are all of them snared in holes. You see that we're trapped. Robbed and spoiled and damn trapped with no way out. How trapped do you got to be to have sex for a damn cookie? How trapped do you got to be? Your parents are either dead or long gone. You're totally by yourself. You're living in an abandoned hotel. You're struggling to find food every day. And here's somebody with a cookie. That's like how child molesters lure in little, little kids. 
You see what I'm saying? So go ahead. It says they are hid in prison houses. They are for a prey and none deliver. They are for a prey and none. Nobody is doing anything. Nobody cares. The only person that can deliver is Hamashiach Yahweh Shai at the command of the Father. As him being set up for that. Give me Isaiah 63. Go ahead. For a spoil and none saith restore. None saith restore. Nobody wants anything to be done. Nobody wants any wrongs to be righted in the situation of blacks, Hispanics, and Native Indians. We just have to simply get over it. We just have to let it go. And actually, we don't even have to just let it go. We just have to live with continued perpetual abuse. Because what are the Haitian? What are we going to let go? What the French did to us? But then we're going to have to let, well, how are we going to let go what the Sri Lankans actively did? You understand what I'm saying? We just got to just live with being treated like absolute garbage. We just got to, I just got to live with it. That's crazy. Isaiah 63. Um, real quick, go ahead. This is what makes the law of the commandments so, so powerful because it, 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 it it's a way of um, reversing that PTSD. It's the way we handle the PTSD. Like Yahweh Shai said, we got to become a new man. Cast off the old person. We get understanding as to why we were going through the things we were going through. And that's that that uh, that guide or that assistance to move past stuff like that. Even if, let's say all of them damn devils, all of the heathens that, that you know, uh, did all those things, let's say they just died. Them kids still got to live with that, with what happened. How are we going to be able to repair these kids, you know, moving forward? Whether, whether it was justice that was served and all of that. They don't even understand justice, like you were just saying. You you so alone, you don't even have no 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 family, no parents, no nothing. Who taught so you like, anything? Who yeah. taught you anything for you to be laying down for a cookie? You don't even understand what justice is. Huh. You, you don't, don't have you no remorse. Have... You don't even really care about what's going on as long as you get that cookie. It's almost like the PTSD is almost like, how dare you take this man away from me who was giving me a cookie? cookie. Yeah, exactly. I, I, how am I going to get a cookie every day? Exactly. Yeah. I need my cookie. That's how sick our people have become. And even like going back to some of them sisters that was at the um at the joint earlier, clearly living with PTSD, clearly in need of, of dire repair, calling out for need of dire repair, but no repair in sight, Isaiah. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> they, they I need cookies, man. I don't know. I know whatever. I just this is just how I eat. You see what I'm saying? That's that's a that's a that's a low level to be brought to you see what i'm saying and that psychologically will destroy a person when they start thinking like that you see what i'm saying you like the person only way to repair is through the spirit because we the physicians but we got to do it through the through, through the scriptures that's the only thing that really can repair our people and really make us anew in totality is this is this bible that the most high has gifted us that's why yahweh Shah said and and the, the father will send another comforter in my name to that, that Holy Spirit that gives us understanding of this Bible, right? So, read in Isaiah 63, 5 to 6. It is Isaiah 63, verse 5. Uh -huh. And I looked, and there was none to help. There was none to help. Nobody is going to help us. No nation, no people, they're not going to help us. Read on. And I wondered that there was none to uphold. Damn, there's just nobody. Just nobody. Get, we're reading about all the uh, atrocity after atrocity. That's been literally the story of the last half a millennium for Blacks, Hispanics, and Native Indians, and nobody's doing anything. Isaiah. Uh huh. So, people, people, girls are going to be raped. There's some of them are raped. There's I. Uh, not in the case of, of these types of rapes like that. You see what I'm saying? This is a um. And a lot, and and, and number one, also, this is prostitution. So prostitution does not bind two people. You see what I'm saying? The act of, of, of prostitution. This is a, um, a this is a sin. It's a sin that is being perpetrated against us. It's also a sin that sisters are voluntarily doing it, right? Give me, um, hold that too, and give me Deuteronomy 23. I want to say it's 23 and like around 20 because they're having survival sex. They feel like it's all they can do. But that's not all they can do, all right? Same way sisters in America act like all they can do is sell they self. You understand what I'm saying? Post ads on 
back page. I feel like that's all they can do. But you can do more than that. In Atlanta, it's going to have to see TJ. Everybody knows you can get cheap on with TJ. They don't have to do that, though. But they have chosen to do that at the end of the day. Because it's as sick as this is, and as much advantage is being taken of our people in exploitation, um, even in the case of the, of, of, of the two boys that was involved, if you consent it, you're still a faggot at the end of the day. I don't give a damn how hungry I am. I'm not going to be no faggot ever. You understand what I'm saying? So there's still error on their parts in this as well for any time that they consented to any of this. You understand what I'm saying? Any consenting that they've done, no matter what the motivation of understanding they're being exploited and taken advantage of, but it's still an issue of you could have not done it. Right? So, Reed, let me see. Oh, uh, right. yeah, you should. No, that's not what I need. Um, I need. Uh, what is this? Dorian, what is this? Twenty-three. Okay. Oh. I need a. Uh, Find me uh, the daughter of any priest. How's that? Of course, Kyle. Still repent. A lot of them don't know, which is why it's important that Levi wakes up and, and, and really starts dispatching brothers in Haiti to, to, to get that message out. But you said many priests. 21 and 9. Leviticus 21 and 9. Both shut the water. It's the book of Leviticus, chapter 21, verse 9. Uh -huh. And the daughter of any priest. Of any priest who are the priest, the Levites. Read on. If she profane herself. Mm -hmm. By playing the whore, so she's a whore. Read on. She profaneth her father. Uh huh. She shall be burnt with fire. You see that? That's a serious judgment. It's all for Israelite want to be a whore. But if you a Levite whore, you get burned on an open flame. You don't just get stoned like a regular woman gets stoned. You get burned on an open flame, right? So what they're doing is is off. But you know somebody needs to come in. And, and, and get them out of that, right? So that's why it's so important to brothers wake up. We got a brother right now. He's from Haiti, but he's in the Dominican Republic. He's trying to bring his truth to Haiti, in which there's also a plethora of other brothers as well. So the mission and work in Haiti is, is very important to do. So these brothers and sisters that there can understand the error and understand that there's another outlet. Okay, the Most High rained down manna from heaven. And he did it under the guide, guide under being guided by a so-called Haitian. You see what I'm saying? So imagine the power that could be in the faith of those people down there if they would have it, if they would understand. All right. Uh, go back to that in uh, Isaiah. We're gonna read. Was that five or six? God. It's Isaiah 63 and five. Uh -huh. And I looked. And there was none to help. There was none to help. Read on. And I wondered that there was none to uphold. Uh huh. Therefore, mine own arm brought salvation unto me. Meaning the Most High, I ain't gonna have Yahweh Shah to bring salvation to us because nobody else is gonna save us about us. Nobody else wants to help us. Read on. And my fury, it upheld me. Uh huh. And I would tread down the people in mine anger mm -hmm. and make them drunk in my fury. Uh -huh. And I will bring down their strength to the earth. That's right. That's damn right. So, uh, Dick, you got something? Oh, yeah. We're not, uh, I can't come, talk. come. With that, we will open up questions. So, y'all go ahead and shoot them questions. 
Chicken no chicken is not unclean. <laughs> what does it matter? Born into slavery. That's right. My schoolboy cute. That's that's damn right. Did you know this brother said his spirit right here? Okay. Uh, the question is, is Job 5 and 19 talking about the seven trumpets? Uh, is Job 5 and uh, I mean, it's, it's it's pretty much alluding to it. You shall be saved in uh, seven troubles. It's uh, one of those yeah, that you can if you can receive it. Yeah. Hassan. Hassan. Yeah, and yeah, I know that was finally it finally got it back working. I was over there like this. Yeah, man, we try to figure it out, man. I'm supposed to be gonna be honest with you, but you know, it's, I just really gotta get my passport. It's the only thing stopping me. <laughs> he trans he he transliterated one day. Like, yeah. <laughs> you know, listen, man, it's eight H. Yes, right. L A Z A R. Call him, call him what reference to scriptures? Get what is that? What is that? Isaiah thirty? What's Isaiah? You Isaiah thirty four four. It's a lot of I see you out. Give me that. It's Isaiah thirty four and four, uh -huh. and all the host of heaven shall be dissolved, mm -hmm. and the heavens shall be uh, ruled together as a as, as a, a scroll. scroll. Mm -hmm. And all their hosts shall fall down as the leaf falleth off from the vine, and as a so like, and as a falling fig from the fig tree. Yeah, uh, let me see, thirty-four and four. Uh, Revelation six and fourteen. That's good. Also, Revelations. Uh, I want to say six and yeah, the thirteen and fourteen right there, and other missile scriptures. I got a few. Uh, eight and twelve. Revelation eight and twelve. Eight and 12. Revelations 8 and 12, what else? 20 and 11. Uh-huh. Uh, Isaiah 13, 10. Isaiah 13, 10. Uh, Blue Ribbon Army, no. Uh, uh, Isaiah 13, 10. Uh, Isaiah 13, 10. Isaiah 13, 10. Isaiah 13, 10. A human being. A human being. Go ahead. All right. A person. If a person is dead, not a dead animal. Does it talk about being slaves to the Ishmaelites in the Bible anywhere? Uh, Give me um Maccabees. Give me Maccabees. Oh, sorry. I'll show it to you. Shalom, uh, Officer Madabar. I see you out. Um, I don't understand the Hebrew word for color. We are supposed to wear our border is the cloth. No, no, Thakla, Thakla is blue. Thakla is blue. Thakla is blue. It's not, it's not purple. Tickleth. Tickleth, which is Thakla. Thakla, Thakla, Ash, the blue flame, blue fire. Uh, uh, uh which the Gadite spoke that um I need Maccabees here in the beginning. I need I need um damn it's right around here. I wish I had more. Uh, uh is this Maccabees? It said it say uh I want to say it's, it's probably around two and ten. Two and ten are glorious, it's a sanctuary. No, 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 no. <laughs> that was smooth. That was smooth. Where we at? Uh, it's right around here. I got my side. Right around here. Uh, what should we call it? Um. Uh. Two and ten. Basically says how. But somebody find slaves from the word slaves in the book of Maccabee. First or second. It's one of the two.
We're in our first black community three. It's where's that? Where's the second? It says in the merchants of the country here in the Where's that three and four loans? Three. And a forty-one. Oh. What did you just put it Yeah, three and forty-one. Probably another one. I said, yeah, this is a three and forty-one. This is something to it. Uh, the book of First Maccabees. Chapter 3, verse 41, and the merchants of the country, hearing the fame of them, took silver and gold very much with servants and came into the camp to buy the children of Israel for slaves. You see that? So these people is coming from all over, different nations to come and take us into slavery. Go ahead. A power also of Syria uh -huh. and of the land of the Philistines uh -huh. joined themselves unto them. That's right. So you had different Hamites that was coming and other uh, uh, Semitic people that was coming to do that. Um, he said, can you drink water while fasting? I mean, you determine what you're fasting for, Mike. So that's it's entirely up to you. Somebody said, Aziz is lawful. Uh, they're not a part of the law like that. But I mean, you know, you could wear them as a rehearsal. They're not unlawful. Uh, I'll say that for sure. They're not like against the law. Um yeah, this brother's tripping trying to eat duck. Duck is a, a, a webbed feet bird of flight. as two strikes. You cannot eat a duck. Um. <laughs> I thought you're crazy. He's right. Yeah, you're, uh, hey, you're very crazy. <laughs> <laughs> He's correct. Okay. Are we allowed? False accusation. <laughs> Are we allowed? False, Are we... false advertisement. <laughs> Are we allowed to protect my house with a firearm? Or is it better? You are allowed to protect your house with a firearm. The Bible does not tell you to lay down and, you know what I mean, to anybody, you know, like that. So protect your house by all means. Okay. So, uh, all right, we got too many real questions right now. So we get ready to close it out. Uh, we uh, give all praises, honor, and glory unto Yahweh, Bashem, Yahweh, Shai, and say Shalom.